You unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear cause I am a child Child of God From my mother's womb You have chosen me And love has called my name I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through Thank you for tuning in to the Weekly Word, Gracious Savior Church's online video devotional for those of you who can't join us for our in-person worship service. If you live in the Vale Valley, we would love to see you here Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., where you can enjoy fellowship, community, love, live worship, and a true sense of belonging. Up on the screen right now, you'll see our mission of loving Jesus, each other, and all people. If you see something in one of those categories that piques your curiosity or something that you're passionate about and want to partner with us in, then go ahead and reach out to us. All of our contact info is in the video description. Speaking of kids, the middle school and high school youth groups are merging together to have some summer fun. We're having three key events throughout the summer that any middle schooler or high schooler is welcome to join us on. On July 11th, we'll be stopping by Glenwood Springs to have a day of R&R, rest and relaxation, at that Glenwood Hot Springs. And on August 9th, we're having a low-key but super fun movie night at my place. The Summer Games, one of our most exciting events that we do all year, is coming up July 31st through August 4th. If you don't know what they are, they're a half-day morning kids camp full of activities and fun. They're for kids 
third through eighth grade. If you have older kids who'd like to join or kids who want to get volunteer hours in high school, we also always need chaperones and camp counselors. It's a fantastic time. Right now, all we need you to do is save the date. If you'd like to register, go to graciousavior.org. And now it's time for a message from God's Word with Pastor Jason. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This Sunday, we are celebrating 4th of July. We're a little late, we know that, but we like to do an outdoor service. And Matthew was gone, helping out with the high school young life last weekend, so we're, we're doing it this weekend. It's all good. But our text for today is from John chapter 8. It says this. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. This is the gospel for the Lord. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I'd like to share a story with you. John Smith was a slave in a small town just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. 1862 had been a hard year for John Smith and for the family who owned him. As more crops were demanded for Southern troops and their war of Northern aggression, more lashes of the whip fell across the back of John Smith. He often wondered what his back must look like after all the whippings he had endured throughout his life. He had seen the backs of fellow slaves with the long white scars crisscrossing broad strips of broken and healed again flesh, but he had never been able to stand in front of a mirror to see his own back. He often hoped that the scars might have formed some sort of pattern, like a tree with long spindly branches reaching every which way. It was a small hope, but small hopes were the safest, safest kinds of all. In the latter days of 1862, John Smith's work began to take its toll. Not that the work itself had gotten harder, he was used to long hours in the fields. It was the thought of never being done that made his knees buckle underneath the hot sun and bags of picked cotton. No matter how hard he worked, the next day was filled with work just like the day before and the day before that one and all the days he had ever known and would ever know. New life began to stir underfoot in 1863. There were talk among the slaves that the president in the North had made them free men and women free. It was official, they said. It was as legal as the papers that had come with each of them when they were bought and sold. John Smith did not believe it. Nothing had ever been given to him, not even the shoes on his feet. He knew men and women, even children who had escaped to the North. Some had made it. Others were captured and tortured and sent further south. One thing was certain, though those who had made it north to freedom, they had earned it. This, this Emancipation Declaration, as they were calling it, was just another pipe dream, another hope too big to believe. It was this hopeless thought that plagued John Smith as he lay his weary head to sleep on a cold February night in 19, 1863. And that night, 
he had a dream. He dreamt that he woke up with the sunrise. And as he approached the barn to begin another day's work, he saw a man inside slaving at the same tasks John had been ordered to do for as long as he could remember. As a man bent over, John could clearly see on his back the scars created by numerous whippings. They formed a tree, a tree shaped like a cross. And turning slowly, the man looked at John and said in a loud voice, I've set you free. Your work is finished. John Smith awoke with tears in his eyes. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. John Smith the sixth was a CEO in Atlanta, Georgia. And 2022 had been a good year for both John Smith the sixth and the farm implement company that he ran. As a matter of fact, the past 30 years have been very good to John Smith the sixth. He did not attribute this to luck because he was the hardest working man he had ever met. His work ethic had propelled him to the top of his industry. And when the Smith family gathered together with all the previous John Smiths who were still living, invariably one of the elders would recall that the first John Smith in the family was a slave. Yeah, John Smith the VI had come a long way. He was proud of his accomplishments. John Smith the VI was a spiritual man. He went to church for as long as he could remember. He worked hard on his job. He worked hard at church too. He was a faithful elder, a strong baritone in the choir, a regular on every church planning and building committee. It was common knowledge that John Smith the VI was financially very generous to his church. John Smith the VI, he, he liked that Bible passage about bearing good fruit. And he often wondered how large his tree had grown and how many fruit he had produced in his life, in his family, in his community, in his business, and his church. Surely, it must all count for something. But in the later days of 2022, the work began to take its toll on John Smith the Six. Not that his job had gotten harder. In fact, business had never been better. But he was tired. He was tired of working so hard and never feeling like he's ever made it. He was tired of putting on the facade of being the perfect businessman. He was tired of carrying the guilt of his past and hiding it from his wife, his kids. He was tired of carrying the burden of his past, his history, and all the John Smiths before him. He was tired. New events began to stir underfoot in 2022. John Smith, the sixth eldest son, got married. And his new daughter-in-law attended church regularly, which pleased John Smith, the sixth. But what shook him were the things she said. She talked of Jesus' death on the cross for her sins and her salvation as a free gift. Free. And John Smith, it bothered him. God loves everyone, of course, but God blesses the good, the hardworking, the generous, the sacrificial. God loves everyone. But you gotta work. That's what John had always believed. What he always taught himself. This salvation by grace, as his daughter-in-law called it, is just another pipe dream, another hope too big to believe. So now this hopeless thought that plagued John Smith the six as he lay his weary head to sleep on a cold February night in 2022. And that night he had a dream. He dreamt that he woke with the sunrise. As he began, as he approached the church to begin his elder duties, he saw a man 
inside, slaving at the same tasks that John had ordered himself to do for as long as he could remember. And as the man inside the church turned, John could clearly see a cross upon the man's back that was secured by nails to the hands and feet. And turning slowly to look at John Smith the sixth, he said in a loud voice, I've set you free. He awoke with tears in his eyes. The day was a blur. He got dressed, got ready for church. Remember the words of his daughter-in-law. Jesus gives life. Jesus sets you free. And it's a free gift. Maybe she was right. He knew one thing. He was tired. He was tired of trying to live up to a standard he could not meet. Tired of working to please God with no end in sight. Tired of pretending to be perfect instead of just being forgiven. And that night, John Smith VI received the words spoken to him by his daughter-in-law. And never before in his life had he felt so much pure relief. It was as if the chains around his legs had come off. Perhaps dreams do come true. And John Smith the VI knew he would never be a slave again. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. John Smith, the slave, awoke from his dream with tears in his eyes. And that day was a blur. As he got ready for work, he remembered the words of his fellow slaves. Freedom was free. And at the time, John Smith scoffed at their words, but maybe, maybe they were right. He knew one thing, he was tired. Tired of trying to please masters that could never be pleased. Tired of working with no end in sight. Tired of working for no apparent gain. Perhaps dreams do come true, he thought. And that night, John Smith received the words his fellow slaves had told him. And never before in his life had he felt such pure relief. He looked in the corner of the barn and knew that those chains would never be around his legs again. John Smith, the former slave, left in the middle of the night and knew he would never be a slave again. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for life everlasting. Amen. Amen.